Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Urban Arc Overland Christmas Roadshow. It's a brand new day. Quick recap of the roadshow up to now. We popped in and saw Andy from Ape Adventure Vans and delivered him his UAO table. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Cheers, buddy, thank you. <laughs> I picked up a little something from Coyote Coatings. Any guesses? Get out. I then popped down to see Matt Brooke at Volkswagen T5 Upgrades where we installed a winch. That is going in there. Some underbody protection. And he may or may not have rectified the miles per gallon, speedo, big wheel and tire issue on the computer. We're yet to find that out. I'm yet to test that. We've broken a camera. I've lost a tripod, but I then did pop in on the guys at Avano. I love the guys down there. We had the bulkhead for the Avano switch. We had the logo put into that. We had a bike bar installed and we had a second table fitted. And I'm still yet to show you the real reason why I went ahead and had a table fitted both sides. But take a look at this. I personally hate it in a video when someone is doing something, an installation video, and they say, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do that. Don't worry, I'll take care of that later. And I did it. I did it in my diesel heater video regarding the remote. I said in that video, I'll take care of that remote position down the line. I just want to prove to you guys that I did. And this is a massive thank you to Alex Frood because he got in his 3D printer and sorted something out for me. Check this out. So my diesel heater is under the seat, as you guys probably know. I installed one of these Scanstrap 12 volt supplies for charging stuff. That runs directly off the Clayton, which is sat behind here. So from there, I chased two wires, in fact, up this pillar, through the headlining and to there. Take a look at that. Oh no, can't see it on the camera. I can see that you can't see it. Check that out. So that is usually just a hole that does nothing in particular whatsoever. But Alex 3D printed this plate and at the moment I've just sticky padded it on. That has got the control for my diesel heater. And once again, the other Scanstra 12 volt supply, USB outlets. So when I'm in my pop top, a, I can reach the diesel heater. So if I want it on, which I always want it on at the moment, because it's bloody freezing, I can just reach over and turn it off. And also that is a great position as a stat because if you put the stat too close to there, down here will get lovely and warm, but it's up here that is at its coolest. And I don't need to explain why I've got charger points up there. That just makes perfect sense. But what a difference that makes. It looks so factory, it looks so good. So once again, thank you, Alex Frood. Seems like winter has rolled in within the last half an hour. It was an absolutely beautiful morning. Now we're in some kind of rolling fog, because that sounds really dramatic. And it looks like it's going to absolutely tip it down. was horrendous and now it's just stopped again. It was so bad, I could barely see in front of myself. I even put my fog candles on, front and back, because visibility was down to about 50 meters, absolutely insane. I promise that the next time that happens, we are gonna be better prepared. And that may be a little hint as to who the next person on the Christmas Roadshow list might be. And that is because we are, of course, at Transporter HQ. We are in the waiting room at Transporter HQ, waiting for the man himself. I've never actually met Andy, and that is one of the reasons why I've decided to hit the road and pop in and see some people face to face. Also, we've got some pretty exciting, much needed upgrades going on the Transporter. Do you think he is? Keep me waiting. Do you know who I am? Hey mate, I was supposed to catch you walking in, I've caught everyone but you. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. If I've mentioned it once, I've mentioned it a hundred times. The lights that come factory installed on the Transporter T6 are absolutely shoddy. So while we are here at the home of the headlight, 
let's get a few upgrades. As you guys know, I would usually be doing this as part of an install video on my driveway. It's winter, it's cold, it's wet, and all I would really be doing is repeating a perfectly executed install video that Transporter HQ themselves have on their YouTube channel. If you want a little bit more installation information, go check out this video. So today we're just gonna run you through how to fit LED H7 bulbs in our headlights, and we'll also show you the difference between the black version and the chrome version. But today we are fitting the Transporter HQ V3 headlights the boss himself he's got gloves on he's getting dirty doesn't happen very often the v3 black on black on black headlight there are so many different options on the transporter hq website and i'm not gonna lie in front of the boss it can get a little bit confusing so resistors are there to do that the reason why they're plug and play is because we've designed them with all these resistors that when you plug it in, it thinks that that's a halogen bulb in its place, but it's not, it's an LED, which is using a fraction of the energy. So then when you do it with a dip beam, same again, you've got a resistor on the back of the dip beam bulb, and that's telling your van that you've got a halogen bulb in there. So that energy's going round and round and round, and sending the signal back to your van to tell you you've got a halogen bulb so you don't get a bulb warning light on the dash. Difference is with the main beam, is the resistor would need to be that big, it wouldn't fit in the back of the housing. Works fine on the T5.1, because they don't have the same level of canvas. On the T6, the resistor would need to be bigger. So that's why when you put a H1 LED in a T6 headlight for the main beam, you just need to tick a box to code it out, to tell it you, to stop monitoring that bulb. Still monitoring everything else, it's just stopped monitoring your main beam. Well, you know if your main beam's gone out, because when you flash somebody, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see, would you? No. Complicated. Did you get all that? You don't need to understand all of that. Just out the box, these will not bring up an error code on your dashboard. But if you select from the drop-down menu, for LEDs on your main beam, that is what is going to bring an error code up. And that's another reason why I'm here today, because after installing the super duper bright bulbs, inevitably there is going to be an error code on the dashboard, but not on the dipped beam, if I've got that correct. If you select the super duper LED on the dipped beam, you'll be all good. Is that okay, guys? Is that right? Yes, take seven. So while Mitch is working hard putting the new headlights into the T6, Andy is gonna take me on a lovely tour of THQ. Let's go. A whole bunch of the suspension, it's not all here, but this is where a lot of the lowering springs, coilovers, air suspension, lift kits are all stored in here. Whether the top of your head, yeah. percentage-wise, lowering to lifted? 80% lowering to 20% lifted, maybe 90% lowering to 10% lifted. There you go. I mean, I like both, but Lower is better. Everything looks good low. So suspension and stuff here, wrong audience for that, isn't it? Because your crowd are all no, the lifted. No. <laughs> so this is the media suite. So this is where all the videos that we do. So get... You've got a media guy. No, we've got media guys. We've got three media guys. Three of us right, now, yeah. yeah. So that's Danny, um, genius behind a lot of our videos. Jake's off. Uh, and then this, smile for the camera boys. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so warehouse managers, runners and stock controllers and all that kind of thing. Uh, more stock through here, air suspension management, 3D printers constantly on the go for development parts. We'll spin through this way, whoop. Mostly merchandise in here. There's a bunch more, but these are all the popular sellers. Easy access. Spin back through this way, so full circle. Windows. Lush slide in T5, T6 windows, more springs, more suspension, more windows. Mikey's sleeper build. Um, that's a delivery full of stuff that's going off to Australia. Australia? Yep. Uh, what's the theme over there, mate? Lifted or lowered? Lifted, 100%. Everything's lifted over there. So up the top there, uh, body kit, styling, dodo, loads of stuff. More offices, more suspension here. This area we call the library, so that's all your little bits, your rock wireless chargers, all your little trinkets, your little bulbs and stuff like that. Carpet lining and containers full of that as well. Um, dispatch team, so pickers and packers in this area. Everything you see on the ground floor here is all windows, so not just transporters, but crafters, caddies, vivaros, boxsters, you name it pretty much. If you turn it into a camper, this is camper glass. This is where the windows come from. At the top there, all the different styles of headlights, fridges, curtains, and many other things, 
all stored up there. Done this now just because everybody's on their lunch, otherwise it's noisy. Loads of packing and stuff going on right here. That's probably my favourite vehicle. So I might sell it soon because I'm just fed up with looking at it. Uh, so through here, this is an Avos wheels unit, although we also have Rotiforms, Black Rhino, KMC, Fuel, everything in here as well. But 90% of our business is Navis anyway now. Some of our builds over the years. The Navis wheel wall. Oh wow, take your pick. And we... Where's that light? must be a switch. There we go. Tires mounted there on wheels, balanced there, inflated there. And I'll take you through to where they're all stored. So this warehouse is just all wheels and tires. So your 20 inch wheels, your custom made splits, your 17 inch off-road wheels, all in here. Here's your tires. See if I can show you something a bit special here. One second. So as well as doing your regular cast wheels that we manufacture and design in volume. These are two piece forged wheels that are designed for customers. So customer made to their design. You pick a design, you tell us the finish, the size, everything, and we'll custom make a wheel for you. So if we look at this one, I'm not sure who this is for, but. So that is a custom made. Uh, so that's actually a one-piece forge wheel for a BMW i4. So someone has dreamt that up in their head and... Well, we've designed it for them. They've given us an idea of what they want. We work out what the fitment and size is, and then that wheel, yeah, is going on a BMW i4. Look at this one here. So this is a transporter wheel, a bit more current. So this is a split version of our chopper steel wheel. So 20-inch staggered wheel. Again, custom made to order, two-piece split, rose gold centers, polished lips with exposed hardware, but it's kind of a, a take on the steel wheel we do call the chopper. It's a bit special. And then just more wheels right the way through there. Favorite wheel currently right now? That wheel there, the chopper. Wow. This is where the guys, when they finish mounting the wheels, so these are all the stuff that will be going out and, uh, to be collected by pallet collection to go out to be delivered. So this is where they put all their stuff together, clean the wheels off, polish them all once before they go out. Right, and then through. So the end unit there is where it all kind of started. That was our first unit before we just kept growing and having to take another units. Mate, this place is, I'm gonna have to shout because you've got the microphone, but this place is huge, far, bigger than I probably anticipated. How did this all start? So we started with camper glass really. It's a very long story, I'll keep really short. But yeah, camper glass was, we originally started importing windows for the transporters and other vehicles, but predominantly transporters. Camper glass was the way to grow the business, but transporter HQ was always kind of the dream. That was where the passion was. So we used the glass to grow the other brand. And then as it kind of got bigger and bigger, transporter HQ took over. I mean, they're both still massive. And then from there, we went on to developing suspension and wheels and yeah, and then just kind of, we, we, we can't help but just keep growing. Distributors come to us and ask us to distribute new products because of our social media and our other channels and how yeah. well we market things. And then we just keep running out of space. So we went from this unit to the end unit, to both units, to building a new unit, to taking over the one in between. Uh, yeah. I would be very, very surprised if you are bolting stuff to your transporter that you haven't heard of Transporter HQ. Like it's Possibly. the first thing. Type it in the internet, type it into YouTube, type it into Instagram. It's just absolutely everywhere. Could you do with more space or is this enough? Definitely could do with more space. <laughs> more space. It's mostly overflow stock that won't fit in all those units. So if you call up and place an order or ask for any advice or anything like that, this is, these are the customer service boys that you'll speak to on the phone. Kieran, Harvey and Chris hiding behind the screen there. And then just more overflow stock here. So more windows, more fridges, van shades. We keep those in stock. Not many people actually physically stock van shades to be shipped out next day. Uh, overflow suspension. Anything that we can't fit in the other units is in this unit here. Black sheep of the car park. What, why, what and why? 
So this is the new Transit Custom, which we've managed to get for most people. But yes, we are going to be selling parts for Transit Customs, but as most people will know, Ford are making the new Transporter. So this, or 80, 70, 80% of what you see here will be the new T7 Transporter. So windows and suspension and wheels and all that should be the same. So we've managed to get hold of one of these pretty quickly to do a load of laser scanning and 3D scanning so we can start developing parts for this, which will then transfer over to the new Transporter T7 when it arrives at the end of 2024. I definitely 100% can promise we'll make it look good. Um, I can also tell you for all the haters out there, that drives better than a brand new T6.1 controversial. So coming here today and having not only Transport HQ but Andy himself fit my headlights is a bit of a VIP pass. Unfortunately, Transport HQ as I stand here right now isn't actually a workshop. But I've just been informed if you head over to the Solo Suspension website, there is a dealer map of all of the dealers that are accredited and approved by Transport HQ supplying and installing Transporter HQ parts. So if you're looking for an accredited installer, Solo Suspension. I'll put the .coms or .co.uk's just under here. So the headlights obviously look absolutely fantastic. It would be remiss of me not to have the candle fog lights changed while I was here. I took a picture of these candle style fog lights the other day when I was in the snow. Check this out. You can see it's almost like an incandescent bulb. Absolutely awful. But now, and these lenses are absolutely filthy, but you can see that these are lovely bright white. If you were to install these, you would not get an error code on your vehicle. It is basically a plug-in that fits to your existing fog light. Plug and play, no error code. Let's go. So this is what it's going to look like in the off position. And then we head to DRL. So you've got this line through here, then we head to dipped beam. Let's indicate, check that out. And then we can go to full beam. Wow. UA05, how have I missed that while I'm here? UA05 and pretty much anything in this warehouse, you will get 5% off. UA05 at checkout, that is my Christmas gift to you. Right Andy, thank you for having me today. Thank you for everything that we've been working on up to now. Could you please wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year? Merry Christmas from everybody at Transport HQ and a Happy New Year. Wow, what a day I have had at Transport HQ. That place is incredible. I can immediately see a difference between the standard Transport headlights and the new Transport HQ headlights. As I approach road signs, they are literally lighting up and bouncing back at me from the LEDs. That never used to happen before with the factory fitted headlights. So a genuine thank you to Andy and Transport HQ for having me today and for creating such cool products. Now, by the time this goes out, it will be the Tuesday before Christmas if my schedule is kept to how I wish it's going to be. I'm saying, but don't put my neck on the block, that if you order now, you'll easily get your stuff before Christmas. UA05 will get you some money off at checkout. It is great to see what happens when you hit the checkout button on the internet, what actually happens, all them people doing the packing, the collecting, then it gets shipped off. The delivery service at Transporter HQ is almost like witchcraft. If you've ever ordered from them, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I've placed orders at four o'clock in the evening before, and it's been there at 10 o'clock in the morning somehow. I'm not gonna hold them to timescales like that, but that has happened. So if this has gone out on the Tuesday before Christmas, I am saying that there is still time to place an order and get your goodies. I've actually got some real world travel advice, and that is, if you get your coffee from Costa and you collect the beans, save that until you get to a services because for the services, they want about six pounds for a cup of coffee. Save your beans, use it at a services. I feel like they've got a right cheek having big signs up all illuminated saying M6 toll clear. If you've then got a 15 minute wait at the toll kiosk. Ever get the feeling that you've chosen the wrong lane or the wrong checkout when everyone else is moving but you? Winter is definitely here. It's absolutely tipping down with rain. So there was no pulling into camp footage and things like that. Absolutely horrible. But with the rain comes a little bit of warmth. 12.5 degrees tonight. It doesn't seem like there's too much wind. We could be on for a decent night's sleep. I am currently watching Bug Out Vehicles. 
the trip that we made to the quarry, egotistically and narcissistically, it has got the T6 full motion bobbing around in the quarry. So I am quite looking forward to that. Now I am currently editing this video, believe it or not. I'm uploading all of the footage from today at Transport HQ. Thank you once again, Andy. Looking back through a few of the comments from episode one and two, a lot of people are asking why, if you are struggling to sleep in the pop top with the cold and the wind, why are you not using the Avano as a bed system? Simply take your mattress from your pop top, fold your Avano down and sleep on that. And there's a couple of reasons why. One is the van is absolutely filled with stuff to do with the next episode. So I haven't got enough spare spaces to put all of the stuff to even lay the bed down. And the other reason is the mattress on my pop top bed is wafer thin because I've got that Froley system with the weird little cups that are weight bearing and things like that. It would be like sleeping on a sheet of ply. There are mattresses available, don't get me wrong, but I haven't got one. I've literally got a wafer thin piece of memory foam and every single night that I go to bed while I've been on this road trip, I think it's gonna be all right. So when the temperature started to pick up, I thought that's lovely. We're gonna be lovely and warm tonight. It was as windy as hell. But tonight, there doesn't seem like there's any wind. The temperature is 12 and a half degrees. It's absolutely tipping down with rain, so. Let's pray for tonight to be our first beautiful night's sleep on the Christmas Roadshow. Thank you for joining me. Stay tuned for the next episode. That might be my cue to leave. Thank you once again. I'll catch you on the next episode of the Urban Arc Overland Christmas Roadshow. Good night.